Now we're going to turn our attention to shear behavior and shear design. And we'll start with uh, principles of shear behavior. And the first thing we're going to do is talk about the behavior of unreinforced concrete beams. And the reason we're going to do that is so we can apply everything we know from mechanics materials about uh, homogeneous isotropic materials, just regular beams. And what you should have learned in an elementary uh, beam theory class, so it'll be like mechanics materials. Um, you have a beam like this, and you load it. And here's a cross section of the beam. Let me try that again. So here's a cross section of the beam. And uh, what you should have, let me get that right, there we go. Uh, you should have learned from the moment you get a stretch distribution like this, linear. And this stretch distribution is my over i. And you also get a shear distribution like this which was VQ over IT. And you notice that uh, the moment is maximum at the extreme fibers and the shear is zero at the extreme fibers and the stress due to moment uh, is zero at the neutral axis and maximum actually for the shear stress. And they vary by what the moment Oops, but the uh, moment and shear do. So here's oh, what the moment and shear do. So here's the moment and there's the shear. And similar to uh, where we had the maximum stress due to moment was uh, where the shear stress was zero and where the shear stress was maximum the stress due to moment was zero. We have a similar thing going on with the moment and shear. So here we would have the shear diagram, maximum at the ends, and zero in the middle. And the moment diagram for a simply supported B would be something like that, maximum in the middle, where the shear is zero. And by definition, uh, since shear is the slope of the moment diagram, of course the shear is zero where the moment's maximum. Anyway, these moment and shear uh, stresses and values sort of dodge each other. They, they're maximum when the other's zero. And if you take any point in the beam, let's just pick an arbitrary point, that point will have some stress due to moment, a normal stress, and some shear stress. Uh, <clears throat> actually, let me draw that correctly. That shear stress uh, over there will be going down. Okay, so some shear stress like that. And you have learned how to draw more circle for something like that. Okay, so if you draw a more circle for that, uh, you would have something like this. Okay. And you could find uh, the maximum uh, and minimum normal stresses, and you could find their orientation. And if you did this for every spot on the beam, so calculate the principal stress direction and the value of that principal stress and you plotted it you would get something that looks like this this is not exactly right but uh these are uh like the shear flow i mean stress flow isoclines uh for principal stresses you could you know run a finite element program and and you could get plots like this and what you have is you have this field of principal stresses um, and, and you could get maximum compressive and tensile stress. And, and so that's one thing you could do. 
However, once the bean starts to crack, and you can get uh, flexure cracks like this, or you can get shear cracks like this, everything we just did goes out the window and is no longer applicable. And it gets further complicated if you actually have stirrups in the beam, which you will, if you have shear reinforcement. And so unfortunately, everything we, we learn about uh, un, unreinforced uh, beams that we learn from classical mechanics, uh, MY over I, VQ over IT, that sort of thing is no longer applicable. Now that we've gone all through that, we're not gonna use it. I do wanna talk about something that we do observe in reinforced concrete beams. And let's talk about uh, shear span. So this is something we do observe, and um, we'll talk about that next. <laughs>